Hello everyone. I wish we could be meeting to celebrate ourselves and inspire one another once more. But today we are here to remember 36 members of our community, of our country, who won't be able to celebrate themselves anymore. 2020 has been a truly difficult year for all of us. And although we wish to see a brighter future, it's not certain yet. Today, we host the Transgender Day of Remembrance, a day that a lot of us dread because it could be a sad day. For me, it's an angry day. It's an angry day because we remember our trans and gender non-conforming sisters, brothers, and siblings that lost their lives. It's an angry day because of the impotency that we feel. It's angry because we shouldn't have to remember them when they're gone, but to celebrate them when they are alive and living, not surviving. The Transgender Day of Remembrance started on 1999 by Gwendolyn Ann Smith, a transgender advocate to honor the memory of Rita Hester who was killed in 1998. Reading Pride Celebration has been uh, adopting this international tradition since 2010 and has kept doing it ever since. Today you'll hear the names of several people who their lives were taken since the last Transgender Day of Remembrance until today. For some of them, their murderers were captured and some justice was given. For others, we are still waiting and demanding answers. But something links all these names, something that we can see, but it's invisible. It's abstract, but solid. It's transphobia, it's racism, sexism, misogyny, and inequality on the most basic needs in a broken and unjust system where violence prevails, created an unsafe environment that prevents members of our community to progress. We need to be better. Better at recognizing our own prejudice, on calling on each other, on keeping our eyes and ears open and our minds ready to learn more. We need to open our hearts without conditions and return the love that we were once given. And we need to look inside ourselves before casting judgment on others. So open your eyes, open your ears, open your mind and your heart and join us in today's Transgender Day of Remembrance while we say each of their names and we encourage you to do the same. Thank you. There is no road map for these times But if you want to ease your mind You gotta look inside You gotta look inside There is no road map for these days But if you want to find some grace You gotta look inside You gotta look inside You gotta look inside You gotta look inside, gotta look inside. I know your heart is crying please but if you want to find some peace, you gotta look inside. You gotta look inside. You gotta look inside. You gotta look inside. You look into the stars above, but you got all you need, and that is love. Look inside. You gotta look inside. You gotta look inside. You gotta look inside. Come on and look inside. You gotta look inside. Come on and look inside. Good evening. Transgender Day of Remembrance was initiated in 1999 by Gwendolyn Ann Smith to memorialize the murder of Rita Hester, a transgender woman in 1998. <clears throat> it has been a time for the trans community and allies to demonstrate support for everyone affected by an anti-trans violence. It's important to remember that hate crimes, which can lead to death, are only one type of violence impacting this community. Sexual assault, domestic violence, and suicide are all disproportionately high within the trans community. 
By being here tonight, we are making a difference by being visible, by speaking out against trans, anti-trans violence. <clears throat> we begin to create a world full of love and acceptance. We can and will be the change. The grief, sadness, and anger we feel here tonight is valid. It unites us and it motivates us to fight for a better future. At the LGBT Center of Greater Reading, we continue to evolve to meet the needs of the community. We provide counseling services to the LGBT community free of charge. We offer transgender and support groups. We also provide professional development training and recently expanded our space to include a state-of-the-art education and training center. We have a clothing and toiletry closet and a food pantry for those in need. We pledge to continue to identify services and programs we will implement to best serve you, our community. Last year I stood here before you on a call for action. In our current political climate, it is important now more than ever to come together in solidarity. I repeat the message of the previous years. We see you, we hear you, we support you, and we love you. In closing, I implore each of you to take action. Educate yourself, stand up, speak out, offer support, offer kindness, and show love to our transgender and non-binary friends. We can do so much more if we do it together. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Michaela Gavilets. I'm the founder and director of Pottsville's inaugural Pride Festival this year and CEO of Youth Empowerment and Support, LGBTQA+, Schuylkill, still under development. Today, we continue to celebrate the final chapter of the most foreboding U.S. presidential administration in our nation's history and the end of its hostilities toward the LGBTQ community. In the same vein, today, we look back over 22 years since the world's attention was, brought, was drawn to Laramie, Wyoming, and the horrifying fate that was suffered by our brother, Matthew Shepard, slain for somebody that he loved. Two decades later, the trans community mourns as 2020 quickly became the most deadly year on record with our trans sisters of color suffering the majority of brutal and deadly attacks. Here at home, in Philadelphia, in the month of June, our sister, Dominique Fells, was victim to a most ghastly and horrifying murder. These atrocities are committed daily, not only in our country, but worldwide, leaving blood on the hands of leaders of countries where homosexuality in any form is punishable by a death sentence. These hostilities targeting the queer community in our country echoes the sentiment of those inhumane societies abroad. Are we not supposed to love another equally, judgment-free as God commands? Sadly, we continue to pray for the day as many committed individuals and groups are giving everything they have to push toward that desired goal. As human beings, as individuals, we demand the right to live freely without judgment, prejudice, or death penalty. 21 years ago, in 1998, as a community observed our first transgender day of remembrance, and also remembered those who are no longer with us, those who were taken away by someone else's hands, and those who had taken their own lives. We remember not only this, remember you, uh, I'm going to start over. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to do this again. It's okay. <laughs> do you want to just talk? Okay. No. no. We could okay. do some talk. Good afternoon. My name is Michaela Gavilets. I'm the founder and director of Pottsville's inaugural Pride Festival this year and CEO 
of Youth Empowerment and Support, LGBTQ Schuylkill, still under development. Today, we continue to celebrate the final chapter of the most foreboding U.S. presidential administration in our nation's history and the end of its hostilities toward the LGBTQ community. In the same vein, today, we look back over 22 years since the world's attention was drawn to Laramie, Wyoming, and the horrifying fate that was suffered by our brother, Matthew Shepard, slain for being who he was. Two decades later, the trans community still mourns as 2020 quickly became the most deadly year on record with our trans sisters of color suffering the majority of brutal and deadly attacks. Here at home in Philadelphia, in the month of June, our sister Dominique Fells was a victim to a most ghastly and horrifying murder. These atrocities are committed daily, not only in our own country, but worldwide, leaving blood on the hands of the leaders of countries where homosexuality in any form is punishable by death sentence. These hostilities targeting the queer community in our country echoes the sentiments of those inhumane societies abroad. Are we not supposed to love one another equally without judgment, according to God's commands? Sadly, we continue to pray for the day as many committed individuals and groups are giving everything they have to push toward that desired goal. As human beings and as individuals, we demand the right to live freely without judgment, prejudice, or a death sentence. 21 years ago, in 1998, we as a community observed the first Transgender Day of Remembrance. And so, we remembered those who are no longer among us, those who were taken away by somebody else's hand, or those who had taken their own life. We remember not only on this day, but every day. And we will carry your spirit and continue to fight for what is inherently right. Equality, inclusion, non-discrimination. And we will continue to carry the torch passed on to us from our trans brothers and trans sisters from the riots at Stonewall and from every activist who who had committed, who committed or continued to dedicate their life to, to light the way for every trans brother and trans sister and for everyone else in between the gender spectrum. We will continue to fight until that day that we can finally celebrate life openly without harm while living in unity and peace alongside of all of our brothers and sisters. May the souls of those taken away from us and their families finally be at peace, and may their spirits soar around us on their day of remembrance. Stay safe, and above all, stay hopeful, stay proud. Live your life the way you had always envisioned it. God bless.
Marion Burnett, age 37, was fatally shot in Independence City, Missouri on September 19th, two days before her 38th birthday. Described as a real goddess and life of the party, friends and family say that if you wanted to have a good day, if you needed to smile, Arian was the person you wanted by your side. Asia Raquel Roan Spears, also known as Rocky Roan, age 32, fatally stabbed while mourning a friend at a vigil in Portland, Oregon on July 28th. A vibrant personality and family woman, Asia Raquel was avidly and openly opposed to social injustice, police violence, and white supremacy. Angel Unique, age of 25, killed in Memphis, Tennessee on October 25th as a result of a gunshot wound. Family and friends held a vigil on October 30th to remember Angel's life. Everybody that knew Angel knew she was a very funny, a very, and very nice to everybody she met. Her family remembered her as a bright person with a positive spirit. Brayla Stone, 17, fatally shot in Little Rock, Arkansas, June 25th. She was allegedly killed as a part of a hit. It's believed that her murderer was paid $5,000 to kill her. $5,000. That's what a 17-year-old black transgender girl's life was worth to the people who planned her murder. A girl who had her entire life ahead of her. In a visual for Brayla, community members remembered her as someone who always held a space for others to be themselves and express their identities. Bree Black, 27. She was fatally shot on a crowded street in Pompano Beach, Florida on July 3rd. Even though there were close to 100 potential witnesses, no one has come forward with usable information for this murder. Not a single clue of why a 27 years young person was killed. Brian Egyptian Powers, 43. Fatally shot outside a church in Akron, Ohio on June 13. Brian was a devout Christian who loved to cook and brought warmth and life to everyone who came in contact with him. His family still demands the authorities justice for his death. Brooklyn Deshauna Smith. Fatally shot in Shreveport, Louisiana, October 7th a committed and skilled cosmetology student and described as a genuinely good person. Brooklyn's family still demands justice for her death. Dior H. Ova, fatally stabbed after an altercation in an apartment building in Kingsbridge Heights, Bronx, New York, August 13th. They were a lover of fashion, dancing, and partying Described as a funny, cool, beautiful, soul full of life and love. Dominique Remy Fells, 27 years old. Beaten, fatally stabbed, dismembered, and thrown in the Schuylkill River in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on June 9th, 2020. Dominique was the 13th victim of violence against transgender and gender non-conforming people this year. Dominique was the organizer of the Rock the Runway, a transgender empowerment fashion show. She's remembered by her friends as fun, vibrant, a being with a beautiful soul who lived her truth so loud that you could hear it a mile away. Dustin Parker, fatally shot in McAllister, Oklahoma, January 1st, while working at his business, Rover Taxi, which he co-founded. 
He was a founding member of the McAllister chapter of Oklahoma for Equality, a local LGBTQ plus advocacy group. He was described as a steadfast friend, an amazing husband and father, and generous to a fault. One who loved fearlessly, worked tirelessly, and took on life with so much hope and enthusiasm that his presence brightened lives. Felicia Harris, 33, fatally shot in Meadowbrook Park in Augusta, Georgia on October 3rd. A talented interior decorator who ran her own company and could do just about anything to decorate. She enjoyed lending her eye to improve the surroundings of others and helped make others feel comfortable in their own space. She had a smile, a laugh, an attitude, a sense of humor that everyone who knew her will always remember. Kelly J. O'Regan, age 20, choked unconscious, then fatally stabbed while reopening the salon at which she worked in San Antonio, Texas, May 6th. Kelly was an outspoken advocate of the LGBTQ community who vehemently opposed injustice of any form, a caring person that even a stranger could rely on and known to live every day like it was the best day of her life. On Trans Day of Visibility, she posted on her Instagram, I was looking at the pictures I used to take before I transitioned versus now and it made me realize I'm way happier than I used to be. I love myself now. I'm happy and proud to be myself. Jane Thompson, fatally shot by police in Mesa County, Colorado, May 9th. She was shot by the police while brandishing a knife. While the shooting was ruled justified, little was attempted in regards to de-escalating the situation or the use of non-lethal force, even though the officer had both pepper spray and a taser. One of her best friends described her as an amazing person, but that she has been dealing regularly with transphobic harassment from tourists visiting her work. Remember Jane, Th Jane Thompson for who she was, not how she died. Johanna Metzger, fatally stabbed in Baltimore, Maryland on April 11th while visiting a recovery center. Originally from Philadelphia, Johanna did not receive recognition from her family or the media's reporting as her true self. A self-taught musician and a music lover, we recognize you, Johanna. Key Sam, age of 24, fatally wounded by a gunshot at a hotel in Lafayette, Louisiana on August 12. Her killer was only 16 years old. He lived a quiet life, but was deeply in love with her family and friends. Laila Pelaez Sanchez, shot and left to burn in a vehicle alongside another transgender woman in Umagao, Puerto Rico on April 21st. Laila had recently moved to the island and was living in Las Piedras, an easygoing young woman who had just begun to explore the world. Lexi, age 33 fatally stabbed in Harlem, New York on March 28th over an altercation with another trans woman. One of her friends said, I really looked up to her because of her tolerance and respect. Lexi had a beautiful heart. She was very gifted. Marilyn Casares age of 22, fatally stabbed and left in an abandoned building in Portland, California on July 16. Casares, who continued to be misgendered by her family after her death, was known for wearing colorful clothes, singing and dancing 
a person who knew Marilyn commented once that she can be seen walking down the main street all the times looking beautiful with her head held up high. Marcy Mac Ritchie, age 22, fatally shot in Dallas, Texas on June 30th. Her killer was arrested 13 days after and charged with murder. Mercy, who was a loving daughter and aunt, and who liked baking cookies at home and relaxing in the jacuzzi, was described by her friends and family as an upbeat, loving, beautiful soul. And to quote a longtime friend of hers, she should be here right now. Mia Green, fatally wounded by gunshot in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on September 28th. Described as a sweet spirit with a contagious smile who could make you laugh without even trying. She was very loved and respected and from all accounts from everyone in her community, she was an amazing, beautiful person. Michelle Micheline Ramos Vargas. Fatally shot and left by the side of the road in San Germán, Puerto Rico on September 30th. Her death marked the sixth death of a trans or gender non-conforming person in Puerto Rico this year. Michelle had a passion for helping others and was studying to become a nurse. Monica Damien, age 34, fatally shot Charlotte, North Carolina on March 18th while in back of an ambulance by being treated by shortness of breath. Her killer walked up to her and shot her right in back of the vehicle. Diamond was active in Charlotte LGBTQ plus community and was the co-founder of a successful promotion company called MC5 Promotion which at the end of the moment of her death was about to celebrate her 10th anniversary. She was also the co-CEO of the International Mother of the Year pageant, pageantry system, a pageant that honored the LGBT community plus mother. She was described as a chosen mother of countless and Loving friend. Neulisa Alexa Luciano Ruiz. Fatal shot in Tuabaja, Puerto Rico on February 24th after being wrongly accused by other clients in a McDonald's for spying on other women in the bathroom. Alexa, who at the moment of her death was experiencing a homelessness, used to carry a mirror to watch who was following her. Nikki Kuhnhausen, age 17. Last seen on June 2019. Nikki's body was found on December 18th of that year. Being so young, her family remembers her as tough and a person who other trans kids in her school felt safe having around. Nina Pop, fatally stabbed in Sykeston, Missouri in May 3rd. Her body was found in her apartment on Sunday night. On May 15th, a suspect was arrested. As always happy, fondly known, and loved by many in her community, Nina was also a devoted sister and daughter. Penelope Diaz Ramirez, killed while in the old male correctional facility in Bayamón, Puerto Rico on April 13th. Little is known about the circumstances of her death and no one seems to be looking for answers. Her death also marked the third murder of a transgender woman in Puerto Rico in a 10-day period. Keisha D. Hardy, fatally shot in broad daylight in the middle of the afternoon in Baton Rouge, Louisiana on July 27th. 
an incredibly talented hairstylist who adored her community, a truly one-of-a-kind spirit who was always smiling and brought a brightness to any room she walked into. She was a real life of the party. The loss of Keisha was felt in her entire community. Raya Milton. Raya was fatally shot after being victim of a carjacking and robbery in Liberty Township, Ohio on June 9th. Raya, who was working as a home health care aide, was also a devoted student of the University of Cincinnati. Often posting photos of her family, she was a loving, outgoing sister and aunt who always put her family first. In her words, never been scared to struggle, I'ma get it eventually. Selena Reyes Hernandez, finally shot in Chicago on May 31st, just because she revealed herself to be a trans woman. Being an incredibly private person, little is known about her personal life, and to this day, even her family has kept quiet. Sarah Blackwood, 39, fatally shot while walking home in Indianapolis, Indiana on October 11th. A self-described nerd who liked the video games and cartoons Sarah was shy and quiet and thought, but thoughtful, generous and cu a curious person. She was also politically active and outspoken and a light and a dark place for many people who needed it in their community. Serena Angelique Velasquez Ramos, age of 32, shot and left to burn in a vehicle while on vacation alongside another transgender woman in Umaga, Puerto Rico, on April 21st. Serena was set to return home in Queens, New York, at the end of the month. Serena was a YouTuber. She was very passionate. She was an animal lover, and her friend described her as a happy person and as a sincere friend as well. Shaki Peters, age 32, was fatally shot in Amity City, Louisiana, July 1st. While there was a suspect, it took police 53 days to bring him in for questioning. Frequently described as funny, joyous, caring, and inspirational, a close friend created a Facebook group where people who knew Shaki constantly post, remembering her, even to this day, justice for Shaki Peters. Summer Taylor. Summer, a non-binary person, was killed while protesting at a Black Femme March in solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement by a man who intentionally drove his car into the crowd in Seattle, Washington, June 4th. Described as a blinding light in a otherwise dark world, Summer was passionate about equality for all, an avid animal lover and caretaker. Tony McDade, age 30, fatally shot by police in Tallahassee, Florida on May 25th. Details of his death are murky at best, since the police claimed that he was a suspect in a fatal stabbing that had a gun and that there was a bloody knife near him. But a Facebook video disputed these claims. Witnesses claim they heard the police say, stop moving and the N word, and shot him after he had stopped moving. This specific case was not reported widely, even though it was just on the heels of the killings of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. Yahira Nesby, age 33. Victim of gun violence, Yahira had her life taken away on December 19th of 2019 in Brooklyn, New York. 
she was known as a religious woman who frequently shared word of faith on her social media. Genuinely good people, her family and friends called her. Every time she was around, she would put a smile on our faces. Jampi Mendez Arocho, fatally shot into Abaja, Puerto Rico on March 5th. Jampi was a fan of basketball and the NBA, and his murder created callouts to some media outlets for continuously misgendering him. On his biography, line on his social media accounts said, humility prevails.
Hi everyone, my name is Christina Dearlove, I'm one of the joint founders of My Umbrella LGBT+. My Umbrella LGBT+, is a volunteer-led project of Reading Pride over the pond in the UK to raise awareness of the lesser-known identities across the sexuality, gender and romantic and fetish spectrums, collectively known here as LGBT+. Every single person deserves to be treated with dignity, respect and fairness at home and at work. But unfortunately, this isn't the case for all workers here in the UK, and I'm sure it's the same there as well. According to the UK Trades Union Council research, 7 in 10 trans workers here say they experience workplace harassment and discrimination, and it's had a negative impact on their mental health. The Trades Union movement is built on solidarity among workers, and there is a strong acknowledgement that we are stronger together. That's why it's important all working people, cisgendered, union members, trans union representatives, and anyone out there who isn't trans is a trans ally. Being a trans ally really isn't that difficult. So, what's a trans ally here, some of you are asking? Well, a trans ally is a non-trans person who is committed to being open-minded and respectful to people who may have a different gender identity to them or present their gender in a different way. They've taken the time to learn more about trans people in their lives and confront assumptions and stereotypes around trans people. Allies work to ensure trans people are treated with respect in and outside the workplace. Every non-trans person can be a trans ally and work to ensure trans people are treated with dignity and respect. There are five simple tips on how to be a good ally to the trans and non-binary community. So, step one. Educate yourself. Knowledge is power. Many people have said they want to be an ally to the trans community and support them, but feel they don't know enough to do so. If you feel this way, there are many resources you can use to learn and empower yourself to be able to be an ally. There are many online resources you can use. Just try typing into Google and asking. You'll find them on YouTube. Also other local LGBT friendly media sites. In the UK we have things such as LGBT Consortium and Stonewall, as well as other local groups as well. There may be times when you might use the wrong terminology and misunderstand something. People might point that out, but don't let that stop you being an ally. Trans people will appreciate that you have the right intent. Use this opportunity and learn more. Step 2. Include your trans colleagues. Many of my trans friends have told me how isolating work can feel, with some stating their colleagues don't even speak to them or allow them to join in conversations. Some people have even taken steps to exclude them. So, make an effort to include your trans colleagues and friends, both at work and socially, in conversations as well as events. Step 3. Respecting boundaries. If you've listened this far, it's likely you want to be an ally, and already are. We've taken a decision to support the trans community at work and more widely, which is great. One good way to be an ally is to understand and respect people's boundaries. You would not ask a stranger or acquaintance or close friend about their appearance or status, and definitely not about their genitals. It's equally important to ask a trans person those types of questions, not. As the general rule is not to ask a trans person personal questions about their transition, for example, if they're going to have or are having surgery. Each person's transition is different, there's no right or wrong way. Understanding that and respecting person's privacy is a key attribute to being an ally. Step 4. Speak and listen. Speak to and listen to trans people like me and your colleagues. Listening to how they describe themselves will enable you to follow their lead. And active listening will help you ensure you use the right things like pronouns and name. If you're unsure, don't be afraid to ask. If you've realised you've used the wrong name or pronoun or terminology, just apologise. Correct yourself. Move on. Don't make a big deal about it. Step 5, and the most important one, challenge transphobia. Speak up for trans people, for trans equality, and stand against transphobia. Don't forget your voice and your actions have weight and can change hearts and minds. Be the first to challenge transphobia 
and correct misconceptions. Do speak up when you when there are trans people in the room, and when there aren't, don't leave challenging transphobia just to us trans people. Another year has passed, and here we are again at another remembrance ceremony, remembering our trans and non-gender conforming siblings who we've lost this past year to hate. Each year it gets harder to stand in front of you after listening to the names of those we've lost and watching as the list grows. 2020 has been a hard year on all of us, but it has been especially deadly for the transgender community. Violent crimes and murders of our trans siblings are at an all-time high, and we question, when does it stop? What can we do? In describing his emotions earlier, Jonathan mentioned being angry. And while I know we're all sad today as we think of the siblings we've lost, it's also okay to be angry. We should be angry that our trans siblings are being murdered and angry that such hatred still exists. We should be angry that the violence continues. But most of all, we should be angry that when we reflect on the lives lost, black and people of color are being murdered at a disproportionate rate. It shouldn't be, but it's dangerous to be black in this country. And it's even more so to be a black transgender or transgender person of color. So the question is, what do we do? How do we stop this? None of us can do it alone. The key is working together, sticking together as a community. It's been said over and over again when referencing our LGBTQ community that our community is love. So tonight, while we are sad, our hearts broken, and we're angry for those we've lost, perhaps the first step we can take in stopping this is supporting each other, recognizing that even within our own community, hate and bias toward the transgender community still exist. We need to take a hard look in the mirror and seek to change ourselves, eliminate our own biases and any hate that may still exist in our hearts. Time has shown that when our community comes together, we can accomplish amazing things. So while we are reflecting tonight, ask yourself, what biases do I have? Why do I have them? And how can I change to support my transgender siblings? Now after doing that, stand up, speak out, and educate your friends and family. Hatred, like homophobia, thrives in an atmosphere of silence and ignorance. Let's eliminate the hate by eliminating the silence. We will not stay silent so that they can stay comfortable. We stand together with our trans siblings and demand justice for the lives lost. But most importantly, that actions are taken by all to end the violence. We are a community of love and a family who needs to come together. Together our voices will be loud enough that no one can ignore us anymore. Our trans siblings need to not only have equal rights and protections under the law, but they also need to not be made to fear being who they are. They are living their truths, and as a community, we need to stand with them. As our day of remembrance comes to an end, I would like to thank all of those who participated to make this day possible. It is my sincere hope that one day we won't need such an event. And it is my belief that together we can make that so. To all those we lost, I say rest in power. The afterlife is more fabulous with you in it. And to our siblings still here with us, we see you. We hear you, we love you, and we stand with you. 
we will continue to fight to make this world a safer, more accepting place for all of us. But until then, as always, I encourage you to keep living your truth, take care of each other, support one another, and most importantly, celebrate who you are each and every day. Thank you all for watching and remembering with us this evening. I hope to see you all soon under much better circumstances. As for me and my house, you will find us serving truth. As for me and my house, you will find us serving truth. As for me and my house, you will find us serving truth. Truth for all right now. As for me and my house, you'll find us serving peace. As for me and my house, you'll find us serving peace. As for me and my house, you'll find us serving peace. Peace for all right now. As for me and my house, you will find us serving love. As for me and my house, you will find us serving love. As for me and my house, you will find us serving love, love for all right now. Let there be peace for all right now. Let's speak the truth to all right now.